Hello, welcome to Writing with Dev number 22. This is my second in my series of 10 top 10s about writing. And today's top 10 about writing is top 10 mind hack writing tools. Okay, are you ready to hack your mind? Let's rock and roll. Number 10 is to delineate, okay? Delineate, 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 delineate where you can with what you can. So when I talk about delineating, I'm talking about um, your writing kind of brain and your writing space, see? If you can delineate, and it's not just between you know, your home life and your writing life or your work life and your writing life, you might need to get away from some of the writing that you are doing to come to a different place, a, a clear place, a, a clearly delineated place, which is where you write or you focus in a different way or you write different things. Okay, so the first thing that you can do is delineate in your computer or your notebook. So you could do your, your heart writing by hand and your work writing on computer. If you are only a, I'm just gonna say heart writing, I know it sounds a bit wanky, but you know what I'm talking about, that writing that you feel compelled to do, that writing you've been putting off, you need to put that in a separate place from your work writing and your kind of home general stuff because we all spend so much time kind of writing on our computers these days. So if you do handwriting for everything, you can have different color notebooks for different kind of projects. You can have different implements for different projects. So you could have um, a ballpoint pen for one, a fountain pen for the other, a pencil, a crayon, anything like that. You can also delineate different colors of notebooks. So, you know, a bright white or a lovely cream or anything you like. You can do that on computer too. So a great way to, deli to delineate on computer is to use different fonts for different kinds of writing that you're doing. You can write on different color documents. You can delineate in a whole lot of other ways, but the most important thing that you can do is to delineate the way that you write, okay? So um, you could do your heart writing on computer and your work writing by hand, if that's what you wanna do, or vice versa. Most people do, um, most things on computer. So if you can find a way to delineate within your computer with different fonts and different colors and different areas, that's probably the best way that you're going to be able to hack your brain into associations with different kinds of writing. And that's one of the things I really want you to try to do is to build up really positive associations with doable amounts of achievable writing. Okay, number nine, uh, you know, brain writing hacks you can do is change location. Get up at five, 10, 15 minutes earlier and you can write, you know, go to a cafe, write for 15 minutes there. Uh, come home 15 minutes later, stop at a bar, stop at that same cafe and have an aperitifo on the way home. Within your own home, you will often find that there are spaces that you don't think about writing in that are actually really good. So if you do most of your kind of screen time, writing time, kind of work, you know, that kind of mash up time and we're delineating, we're trying to get to another space for you to designate your writing to. Front deck, back deck, bathroom. I'm not joking about the bathroom. You know, grab a whole lot of pillows and sit in the bath. If you have a laundry, you might find that that's an amazing space that you can write. You can write in cafes, in bars, in, in libraries. We know all of those things. You know what one of my red hot tips for writing is, if you want to write in a different place, if you've got a car, write in it. I found some of my best writing in the car, often while my children have been inside the house and they haven't known that I'm simply out the front in the car. Change locations around. If you've got a spare room, why don't you write in that? If you've got little kids, not kind of teenagers because they need their privacy, but say you've got kids who are at school or not around, you could just sit on their bed, you know, push off the Lego and push off the fluffy toys and write there. Because you're looking around and you're, it's a different space, it's different it's a different light, it's a different feeling. Stairwell, um, there's a million places um, in your vicinity that you could write in, but the idea of, of, of changing the location really uh, can change the way that you feel 
and you can have a really uh, a, a different environment to write in. And I also know, I was going to say I think, but I know, just that idea of movement to a different space sets all of your brain chemistry uh, into a space where you go, oh, I'm going into the writing space now, rather than you just sitting where you normally sit, whether it's on your couch or on your bed or your armchair at the table, going, I'm going to get to that writing, I'm going to get that writing. As soon as you stand up and you start moving to that different location and you pack your stuff up ready to go, even if it's just the other room, something happens in your brain and that's what we want. Number eight, writing mind hack tool. Are you ready? All right, it's coming at you. Make yourself uncomfortable. So here's a way to get yourself into doing that writing that you've been putting off or you may not have been putting off, but you want to force yourself to do it. So you're sitting there going, oh, I really should do that writing. I've just got to do 10 minutes or I just need to do an hour or I just need to finish that chapter. Make yourself uncomfortable. Set yourself a bit of a, um, a time that you're going to um, do. So it could be 15 minutes. Could be You know what time is. I don't have to explain to you. So say you go... I'm going to do 15 minutes. Make yourself a bit uncomfortable. Make yourself a bit too hot. Make yourself a bit too cold. Uh, if you're hungry, go, yeah, yeah, 15 minutes. You stay hungry. You can eat. You're not going to die. You can eat when you're finished. Put a little rubber band around your your um, your wrist that is just kind of a bit annoying. It's like, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm just going to make, I'm going to, I, I've committed to doing this writing and I've made this action which has made me slightly uncomfortable. And when you have finished this doable, achievable chunk of writing, you can relieve yourself from that slight feeling of discomfort. Before I had children, I was just crap. I would be like, oh, I've got like 15 minutes writing work to do. And I would just spend days and days just fucking around and not getting it done. And when I had my first child, that really changed. That really changed because, you know, I was... I've never stopped working, so I had to write to live. And um, my my son's father was also a freelancer. We never, you know, there was we didn't have maternity leave. We didn't have much savings in the bank. It's just like when you could, you worked because you didn't know when you were going to get sick or someone else was going to get sick or a baby was going to get sick. So I'd, I'd kind of wake up in the morning, breastfeed the baby, put him back in the bed with his dad, just kind of creep out into the cold lounge room where my laptop was I just pick it up and I go oh my god I really need to go to the toilet it's like all right 200 words you can go to the toilet it's like oh I might wear my pants it's like oh it's all right it's floorboards it'll be fine this chair it's hard rubbish next week who cares so I'd sit there and I'd just like bang 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 out 200 words it wouldn't even matter if I just wrote this is crap I hate this I hate you 200 words this is bullshit and then I go to the letter I come back and go oh I feel good all right so then I'd just keep writing and I'd be like gee I could I'd love to turn the heater on. It's a bit cold. It's like, all right, have another 200 words and then you can, you know, put the heater on. It's like, all right, okay, heater, you're going on as soon as I've finished 200 words. 200 words are done, heater's on. Whew, sit back, have a bit of a read of what I've written and then it would be like, gee, I could do with a coffee. Really? You're a bit uncomfortable? Oh, you poor thing. All right, get cracking. 200 words, you can have yourself a coffee. So I'd be writing away, probably go back a bit, do a bit of editing, writing away, go back a bit, do a bit of editing, and then good, done, and so forth. Feel like a shower, feel like a piece of toast. And you just, I would put words in front of the relieving of that feeling of discomfort in order to get me cracking. It works, make yourself a bit uncomfortable. Number seven, writing mind hack tool. Substances. You might have like a special tea that you are only allowed to drink when you write or a really beautiful smelling candle that you like but you're only allowed to you know have that candle burning when you're writing. Um, you might sit down to write and to get you there glass of wine, um, half a Valium, microdose LSD, bit of a joint Whatever would take you to a slightly different place that transcends the normal. And yes, we're all adults. I don't have to tell you about substance abuse. We're not talking about that here. We're talking about using... Nobody's talking about candle abuse. I said, yeah, put that lovely little smell, smelly, smelling candle or that incense on. People going, oh, you know, what if they get a bit out of control? It's like, you know what I'm talking about. Um, if you find yourself like taking a lot of drugs and not actually writing. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about 
gee, I feel like writing, but I need a bit of a lure. It's like, oh, I'd love to smell that candle. I'd love to smell that incense. I love that tea that I rarely use. I've got that beautiful bottle of wine. You know what I bought myself the other day? Um, a bottle of ginger liqueur. It's the perfect kind of thing that you can have to write. When you sit down to write, you can have a little ginger liqueur while you write and you've got to write for 10 minutes or 15 minutes or half an hour, but that's your little lure in. You know, so we're moving from you know, the last mind hack was make yourself a bit uncomfortable. This is kind of make yourself a little a little comfortable. Have a little bit of a, a carrot there. Most of these things are sticks and carrots. They're just ideas that have really worked for me and worked for other people that I know. And I just want to hand them on to you because I'm a giver. All I do is give, 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 give. Okay, number six, writing mind hack tool. All right. Now, we're all supposed to be dying of chair disease, apparently, and we're all supposed to have standing desks, okay? Now, full admission, I don't have a standing desk, but I know a lot of people who do. They've um, turned something into a standing desk, or they have purchased a standing desk, um, and there's a lot of us out there who have found spaces that already exist in our houses which are great standing desks so if you think about standing desk i'm not telling you to go out and buy something if you've got something great um if you don't have something you can basically find it in your house is it a chest of drawers is it a kitchen counter with a bread box on top is it a hallway kind of buffet thing which is um a little bit tall we've all got a whole lot of cooking books and art books and other books that we don't read won't read or have already read why don't you kind of make a bit of an installation so you can do a bit of standing up work okay so have a standing desk and when you've decided that you're gonna do some of the writing that you really have to do, uh, when you're doing that writing, you can sit in the most comfortable place in the house. For me, that's sitting on my bed or sitting on the couch or sitting in the armchair. And you can do that, you can sit there in the most comfortable way possible, in the, you know, the warmest room, the room with the nicest view and the prettiest light, you can do that, that's all cool. When you are messing around and you are drifting off into Pinterest, porn, pets, whatever it is that is pulling you off track within the internet world, then you have to stand up. So this has got a real added benefit. So if you're futzing on the internet, you could also be procrastinating working, which I happen to be expert at and a big fan of, which is, you know, you should be working on something, but you're procrastinating working on something that you don't really need to work on, which is a bit of a kind of easy hit because that email will be sent off, that event will be loaded up on the website or that page will be looking a bit more sparkling, those kind of easy hits. If you are procrastinating and you'll know that you are, you have to stand up. So that's a win for your body. And it's like, oh God, I really want to sit down. It's like, yeah, you want to sit down? All right, you get to sit down, but only on the proviso that you write that thing that you've been meaning to write and be putting off, okay? Five, writing mind hack number five. Do you remember when you were young and you would like put on your athletic squad outfit or your brownie um, dress or your Sunday best, or your party frock, or your pajamas, or your dress ups. And remember how you kind of felt different? It might be a uniform. If you were in Scouts or something like that, you know, you put your uniform on, you feel a bit special and you feel a bit different. I want you to have a think about that thing that you either own or you have thought of purchasing, which is a little bit over the top. You know what I'm talking about. It, could, it might be like a kimono or a crushed velvet three-piece suit or a tiara or a tutu or some crazy cowboy boots, or um, an amazing silk scarf, big chunky necklace, hat that says I'm world's greatest writer. Think about that costume that makes you look like a cat woman, or a pirate, or a cowboy, whatever it is that you like the idea of wearing because it makes you feel something different and kind of something positive in some way, shape or form. Get that. Buy that, buy that thing, buy that thing that you you really want to wear, but you go, it's a bit over the top. Gee, I love it, but when would I wear it? Wear it when you write. You wear it when you write, and you only wear it when you write. So you have this really positive experience because you, you get to put on this kind of luscious or fantastical or erotic outfit that you don't wear any other time. And then when you stop writing, you have to 
take it off and put it away. And it will get you back into that space. It will create good associations with that space because your brain will think of how wonderful you feel wearing that kind of crazy prom dress, mystical Asian figure, wafting. My son loves robes. That's what I'm trying to get to. A gardener who um, did a bit of work for us once thought he was a wizard. He likes to write. He wears these kind of Asian wizardy kind of situations. If that is your thing, go buy it and go, go wear it when you write. And if you suddenly start wearing it so much, you think, you know what, I could wear this up the shops. Wear it up the shops and buy yourself something very special and something designated to just only wear when you write. Number four, identify the things that you use to procrastinate with and distract yourself with and use them as rewards. So I just gotta walk the dog first. I've just gotta make you a cup of tea first. I've just gotta put the dishwasher on first. Like, no, 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 that's a reward. Uh, unpacking the dishwasher is the reward. Folding the clothes is the reward. That annoying thing that you have been telling yourself that you have to do before you can do the writing, Mm -mm -mm. that's a reward really honestly look at sit down and have a think what prevents me from writing what do I put in front of writing because you know how good you will feel when you write you'll feel fantastic when you write so why are we so good at putting obstacles between ourselves and feeling good there's a kind of short-term immediate gratification kind of things but it's the long-term things that are really substantial and they're really satisfying so identify what it is that you that you procrastinate with or distract yourself with it could be housework it could be oh what the internet uh, it could be procrastinate working it could be procrastinate caring that's a big one oh, I've got to read to my kids I've got to call my mum no you don't this is your life you can do that later if it's that important you can use it as a reward and therefore put your writing ahead of it so number one identify what you use to distract or to procrastinate with and use those as a reward and put them after your writing. You have to be quite self-aware and very honest in order to do this, but you know what? I reckon you can. Number three uh, is employ online tools. I'm gonna to have a whole top 10 of the very best online tools. And so that is my number three in writing mind hacks is to use online tools. So check them out in my top 10 online writing tools video. Okay, number two, diet's not broken at breakfast. That is a hack, that is a hack. All right, so as you know, basically I'm from the Paduma Institute, the Pull It Directly Out of My Ask Institute, and I just make stuff up. This is actual science. People used to say to me, when's the best time to write? I go, whenever you want. That's the best time to write, whenever you want. Science has proven me wrong. The best time to write is as early in the day as possible because willpower is stronger in the morning. Diets are not broken at breakfast, apparently. I wouldn't be able to tell you, but that's what the scientists have to say. You have to know the beast you are, but also surprise yourself. You're more likely to do your writing if you set your time and sit down and do it at the start of the day. Now, now side jump here, just put a pin in that. Something that a lot of people ask me about is, you know, should I exercise before or after my writing? Again, different people need different things, different projects at different times. So if you're not sure whether you should write before or after your writing, is that procrastinating? Is that procrastinating exercising? Try it. Do a week and go, I'm exercising. I'm going to write for four days this week and I'm going to write, I'm going to, or I just do it two days on the weekend, but I'm going to exercise first, then write. And then the next week, vice versa, go, um, I'm going to do my writing first and my exercise is going to be my reward. See what works for you. Chances are different projects at different points are going to need different things at different times. But keep in mind that well-known and worn out cliche, the most common thing is to do the same thing and expect different results. Shake it up a little. I mean, we need routine, but we also need novelty. So you might find different exercises or different lengths of exercise might be quite good. So instead of going out and having a 10K run, perhaps, I don't know, maybe have a two or 3K run, then do your writing. And then that frees you up for the rest of the day. You can have a walk or bike ride later or catch a class, if that's your kind of thing. Number one, okay, number one, we've landed 
here it is, eat that frog. All right, bear with me, what the hell am I talking about? Eat that frog. Mark Twain once said, if it's your job to eat a frog, it's best to do it first thing in the morning. And if it's your job to eat two frogs, it's best to eat the biggest one first. Eating the frog means to just do it, otherwise the frog will eat you, meaning that you'll end up procrastinating about it the whole day. So there's a guy, I think his name is Brian Tracy, and he's written a book about procrastination called Eat That Frog. I've bought it, but I haven't read it. But basically the idea is, I know, I hope you're laughing at that. Basically the idea is that you've got to identify what the thing is that you really don't want to do most of the day. It could be responding to that annoying email, it could be exercise, it could be your writing, it could be cleaning up a mess from last night, it could be having that difficult conversation, and you should do that as soon as you get up in the day. If you've got this thing that you're really dreading doing, your day is just full of distractions and procrastination, going, oh, I've got to eat that frog, oh, I've got to eat that frog, and it just kind of, the frog kind of gets bigger and bigger and uglier and uglier. Get up in the morning, pull it off fast like a Band-Aid, it's done, that's great but there's added benefits because you just feel so fantastic. Just get you really motivated for the rest of the day and everything else seems much easier. Feel a sense of satisfaction and completion if you do it early in the day, but you've got to be honest about what that frog actually is. I think a lot of people are very confused about writing. It's like, oh, I really love writing. It's like, really? You say you really like writing, but your reveal preferences, which is what I can see that you do with your time, because I can go into your computer and I've been videoing you, you know, nothing stalky, just trying to help. And your reveal preferences shows me that you really love just sitting on the internet and cleaning your house. Because even though you tell me about these things that you like to do, you actually do these other things. So, eat that frog. Ugliest one first. And if there's two ugly ones, the biggest ugliest one first. Thanks for joining me again today. There's a link in the comments to all my other online classes and to show you ways you can donate to my little cry for help because every time you spend a dollar, you are voting on how you want the world to be supported by the City of Melbourne COVID-19 Arts Grants.